And I'm Nick Harcourt, your host for Morning Becomes Eclectic, and a uh, very good uh, morning. And welcome to Talvin Singh. Hi. Good morning. Good to see you here. Thanks for thanks for coming coming on by. We're going to talk a little bit about the record and tour the record a little bit, the new album, which is called OK. But what have you been doing? You've been in town for a couple of days. I know you've been uh, been hanging out. Anything interesting? Yeah, I just I got it like a couple of days ago, and like two hours before playing in Los Angeles, and it was great. It was a really good show, and you know, um, people dressed up really wild. A Halloween show. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people dressing up and doing the uh, doing the whole thing. Now, coming fr- from England, it's it's a little different here, isn't it? The whole Halloween experience. They they get into it a lot more. Yeah, it seemed like everyone was like kind of on this whole party trip. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, in England, there's it's kind of I suppose different. You know, it's uh, I mean, when the whole rave scene was happening, there was a lot of um, you know the Halloween parties were like most renowned kind of rave parties. So every you know every every one would kind of look forward to Halloween so they can, have, you know, experience the best raves of the year. Right. As opposed to Christmas, you know. <laughs> so Christmas is pretty kind of dry and dead. It's, uh, what, in England? It's pretty pretty quiet over yeah, there? Yeah, I think everybody just walks away. Everyone just leaves. You well, know. the country seems to close for like two weeks from my memory when I lived there. I haven't been there for a while, but that's pre- pretty much what I remember. Yeah, and it's just really sad as well. It's like, you know, it's all you see on television is, uh, you know, just just ads like advertising you know for summer holidays no just you know just kind of commodified like everything's so it's really strange you know it's, it's i think it's a big pressure on a lot of uh, families you know coming on to christmas like from this time of the year yeah you know um it's very sad really same here as well i mean uh, there's there's definitely a lot of pressure on people to have a good time have a have a fine time well i'm gonna have a great time i'm gonna be in india chilling <laughs> And so you head into India for uh, for the holiday. Yeah, or are you gonna I'll be working. I, I kind of working and and then taking a break. Um, I'm gonna spend some time with my teacher, who's taught me how to play the drums, uh, the tabla. So you know, I, every year I spend some time with him, and um, he's about coming on to 80 now. So, well, what's the, what's the name of your teacher? His name's Ustad Lishman Singh. He's a very very great man, great master of master musician. We had a, uh, a couple of calls before you before you got here today from a few listeners asking if we could ask you a couple of questions. And one of them, it seems such a simple question, but you, you led us right into it, is when did you start playing the tabla and, and how did, did that come about for you? Um, I mean, it, you know, I think for me it's like I can't remember when, when I started playing. You know, it's always kind of been in my system whether I had a drum or not. You know, I was playing pots and pans from the kitchen when I was like five or six. And before that time, um, you know, my grandmother's knees was like my first uh, drums, you know. And I dedicated my album, OK, to her. Because yeah. because your grandma taught you music or, I mean... But, um, she not taught me music, but, you know, I mean, my family was always into music. And, you know, I would sit in between, you know... I would sit on her knees and, and just play. Well, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, you grew up grew up in London, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, and your family of Indian origin, but didn't you? Your family was in Uganda, I believe, before you got to. Uh, no, my father's. Uh, he, you know, he spent some time there. Right. And um, and but they're from India. My family from India. So so growing up in London and having that. Uh, that obvious connection to somewhere else did you at an early time and at an early age as you were beginning to to realize that there was an, another kind of culture out there how did how did that sort of uh, come together for you later on wh- when you began to, to to make your own music to mix the cultures because your music is is such a cross genre mix of all, all sorts of uh, influences yeah totally but it's not really you know for me the music's not about really mixing it's just it's just me this music is very much my style and it's my personality um you know that's why i put a face to towards my music and um it's very important i think over the last like six seven years there's been a lot of kind of low-key dance music producers and and now it's just become a bit of a mess really because and everyone everyone's kind of complaining about um you know, there's so many different genres of music. You know, ambient drum and bass, and house, and hard step, and tech step. And the reason why, one of the reasons why that's happened is because 
I don't think a lot of artists have put their, you know, personality and and um, their face and to their product, to their music. I think it's a very important thing. You know, it's very hard to kind of define what my music is, the style. It's very much Taoism and music. When you say uh, other artists perhaps don't put the, the face to it, are you saying that it's more perhaps... Uh well, because, you know, they haven't put their face to, towards the product, and that was for a particular reason, and it was very positive, but now it's become, it's like gone a full cycle, you know, and now it's it's a real problem because there's so many different, you know, you know, at the end of the day, people have to, like, you know, have a title or a name to, to kind of promote some Well, you got to be able to music and give it some kind of description. Yeah, exactly, right? and the description which has been happening is, like, <laughs> probably, like, 100 like different kind of terms, you know, to define s s different styles of dance music. It's kind of a bit strange, really. If you think about dance music as, uh, I mean, here in the United States, I guess about a year and a half, two years ago, it was it was predicted to be the next big thing, and some people certainly broke through. A, lot, a number of artists broke broke through, but then all of a sudden it, it seemed to get very confusing, and as, as you said, uh, it, it seems like a... A bit of a hodgepodge out there right now. So many things being lumped into this category of electronic music or dance music or whatever. Uh, maybe we should come back and talk about that a, a, a little a little more <laughs> later on. But I want to play some music from from your album. The first track you selected for us, uh, the album we should say is called OK. It's in stores officially tomorrow on Island Records. The first track you selected for us is called Butterfly. Can you tell us a little bit about this track? Butterfly, yeah, it's um. You know, I had a working title for for a while, which is Corvina, and that's the name of the instrument which is playing most of the melodies on there. And uh, a very young um, musician from South India um, called Devi, she played this instrument. The, sit the sitar actually comes from this instrument, Corvina. Um, it's incredible instrument, it's huge, and uh, and she's a great player. She's about 19, and she's from Madras, and she listens to. You know, she listens to music, every kind of music, you know, from like Yusuf Latif to R.E.M. And, and obviously, you know, uh, South Indian classical music. So, yeah, I really like this track. And it's the only track which I recorded like totally in, in Bombay. You know, I did all the programming there. And, and so this the whole thing was recorded in India. Well, let's come back and talk about recording the album a little later on. But as you said, this track recorded in India is called Butterfly. My guest is Talvin Singh. We'll come back and chat some more after we listen to it. And Morning Becomes Eclectic. So Morning Becomes Eclectic at 89.9 KCRW Music from uh, Talvin Singh's album, OK, a piece of music called Butterfly. The album is uh, released tomorrow, officially on Island Records. And we were talking while the, while the music was playing about... I guess you would call it dance culture or the, the scene over in uh, in Britain right now. And you were saying it's it's changed as people aren't really going out and dancing anymore. What's 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 going on? Well, it hasn't really changed as yet, but it's about to change. And you know, I think um, <clears throat> you know within the whole taste tastemakers kind of scene, you know, it's like we're just really bored with that. And and I think you know maybe in a couple of years, and it's going to be a whole new style. And I think that's just going to develop by doing like low key, kind of low stress events. And I've been doing a few of them. And I just, um, you know, get big warehouses and doing installations. And we did this event where, you know, we set set up a recording studio in the middle of the warehouse. And <clears throat> and there was about six musicians which I invited, like this African harp player, um, Tundi Jagadi, plays Kora, and you know some electronic people and. Um, you know, it was a great symbiosis of a lot of things and a lot of instruments and a lot of different energies. And and it was great. And we, we had our back face towards the audience. And, you know, it was, yeah. And Sounds people, like craft work or something. Well, people just loved it because because it was like listening to a DJ where you're not watching a performance, but it's happening live. It's a different experience. It's, so how many people would you get into something like that? Well, it wasn't advertised, but like 500 people showed up, right. you know, and it was it was like a, it was called the C mail C mail party, which you know stands for cosmic mail. You know, it's like you know people just forget that it's like a really important thing. You know, um, I mean, there's so many ways of communicating now, but you know, I think I don't know if you've ha ever had that experience of like thinking of s someone. Uh huh. And all of a sudden, intensely, all, all of a sudden they call you. They phone. Oh yeah, yeah. you uh, know what I mean. Happens all the time. You can almost will. So I'll give you my email address, like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> after. 
I've had the I've had these feelings personally, and if, you, if we're relating on this level, maybe maybe um, this is the kind of thing you're you're referring to, where all of a sudden you think of uh, an ex lover or wife or something from seven years ago, and you go, wow, I wonder why I'm thinking of them, and all of a sudden they call you from the other side yeah. of the world. It's yeah, like totally. They're coming in. Yeah, exactly. One way or another. Um, uh, you're you're in town uh, t today. You're off to San Francisco, and then you're going to New York, and you're going to do the CMJ thing, which we're heading to ourselves. And then, uh, as you said before, we we heard that last track. You're you're off to India for for the winter. Yeah, there's the Channel V Awards. My album just got released there, the OK album, and it's been received uh, very well. You know, the India is a really strange place when you know when things happen there. They really do happen intensely, and. Um, you know, musicians become politicians there. It's really crazy. <laughs> yeah, so. Film stars. Yeah, and, mind yeah. you, I think that's happened somewhere else. Yeah, as well, well, it, it? Yeah. yeah, it happens here, you know. Or, or it can happen here, but right. it can never happen in the UK. <laughs> you know, forget it. Right. So uh, so you're off there, but let's, let's, let's come back a little bit to actually making this album. You made this album in India. You made it in Japan. Uh, wh wh where else? Bombay, Madras, London? Well, the thing is, uh, I actually made it in London. I made it in my studio. You know, I but you recorded different... I, yeah, I had to go out to record um, certain musicians, um, uh, like this, uh, this kind of four singers from Okinawa, which is outside Japan. I recorded with them um, for a track, which has been like single of the week for... You know, in London, it's really doing well. That's a track we played here the other week on uh, Morning Becomes Eclectic, and the phones were just went went crazy. What is that? Um, yeah, it's uh, what is it? It's how on, did you how uh, did you end yeah. up? Putting what is it? Sorry. No, I was yeah, going to say, how did you end up using the, those those kind of vocals on on your music? Um, because I've been listening to this style of music for six years, and and I found a lot of um, similarity to Indian music, a particular. I mean, India's a continent; it's like it's huge. And this music is very different. You go to South India, and and it's totally different to n the North India. And you know, there's a strong line in music, which like you take African music, and then you listen to Moroccan music, you hear the connection. Moroccan music, you listen to Iranian music, Iranian Pakistani Sufi music, you hear the connection. It just goes down, and you go South India, Balinese music has a connection, Okinawa, and you know, there's this huge line, and. Um, you know, that's why I don't really separate, um, you know, music. Music's just one language, really. It's a real universal language. And my, my album's very much kind of on that trip, but everything re reverts back to India. Like, you know, if, if you take, like, Mombastic, which is a pretty much 6-8 kind of jazz, mousy kind of uh, track, you know, you still hear that kind of element of, like, how an Indian rhythm, a rhythm um, sorry, and an African rhythm congregate. You know, you you hear that connection. You don't hear the separation. Right. You know, and that's what I think I've achieved in, on my album, and that's the most important thing. That's that's what I wanted to hear, and, and you know, it's good. You've, you've brought us in a remix, which we're going to listen to uh, um, a little bit of right now. Can you tell us a little bit about this this remix? Yeah, it's a track uh, called Vikram the Vampire. Um, it's the last track on my album, and um, and Francois Kavorkin's just done this remix, and. After he did the remix, uh, you know, I played a certain style of tablas, uh, tablatronics, like tablas going through effects and stuff, and, um, you know, similar to the, the live show, which I'm going to be doing in New York for CMJ, is a different kind of thing. It's not representing this album as such, uh, as a band, but it's it's an experiment, not an experimental thing. I, it's, um, I hate that word, experimental. <laughs> You know, it's 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 we, we different. Find it's more con word for it. yeah. It's well, it's just more conceptual. You know, this performance I'm doing. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to playing in New York, like playing live, because you know, live is my thing, really. Um, I mean, I wish I you know I had the opportunity to play here, but I think early next year, you know, we're going to come here and, and play live mm -hmm. with a band and. Um, it should be. I'm really looking forward to that. Well, we'll get you in next time. I know that uh, we uh, we had originally hoped that you were going to play today, but for some reason it, it didn't work out. But we've got this really cool remix. We're going to take a, a little listen to this now, and then we'll come back and talk a, a little more with uh, Talvin Singh as Morning Becomes Eclectic. 